Hello! Today we are joined by the incredible cast of If We Were Birds, the first show in Theater Arendelle's main stage season, which is happening very, very soon. And today we have the cast here for a cast interview. So let's jump right into it. We're going to start with a series of rapid fire questions. So I'm gonna fire some questions at y'all and you both could write your answers down and hold it up to the camera to share it when you're done. So the first question I have is, who is your favorite character in the show? Three, two, one. Show your answers. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> it's hilarious because the three members of the family have all voted the baby as the best. Yeah. <laughs> baby. Mama, Papa, and baby. <laughs> Ready for the next one? In one word, try to describe the show using one word. God. Go. It can't be put into words. It's so much. It's everything. It's, it's, even just trying to think of one word to contain it all. I'm like, oh my gosh, it's so vast. So, uh, this. <laughs> okay. Question number three Who is most like their character? Oh my god! You said I was a baby. <laughs> I love it. I embrace it. I think you're really like the servant because like you're really bubbly and funny and like find the humor in things. But at the same time, you can be serious. Like you're not like one of those people who can like not be serious. Like you actually give people like their space and like care and everything when they need to. So yeah. Question number four. What is one thing that you cannot live without during rehearsals for If We Were Birds? Three, two, one. <laughs> A good long stretch, Molly. I love that. Cool. <laughs> They're so good. Okay, controversial. Race or Athens? Three, two, one. Oh my gosh, it's oh. across the board, except, except for Molly. Molly. I think that I just couldn't get out of my character's mindset. I was like, I don't want to think about any kingdoms being better than any other kingdoms. They are all, they all have their problems. So I just, I couldn't get out of that, so. No, 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 <laughs> Athens treats its captives well. <laughs> so you better. I was gonna say, I was like, Kenneth's character treats me the best. So I'm mm -hmm. going for Athens. Question number six, what is one word you would use to describe your fellow castmates. Three, two, one. Aw, so many supportives. Honestly, be supportive. <laughs> there's there's so much, there's so much support within not only the everyday like check-ins and, and checkouts at the start and end of every rehearsal, but even just on the breaks, touching, like touching base uh you know connecting and walking home and just just everything it's it's really it's a really supportive cast and with a show as intense and important as this it's it's essential yeah okay our last question of the rapid fire round if you could be any bird what would you be oh <laughs> okay here we go question this is good ready three two one Oh my God, Nell, I love your answer. Does yeah. it count? <laughs> yes. I think it counts. I was very passionate about this question. I forgot all birds. Kind of the first one that came to mind. And I thought about it and I do want to be a chickadee. I just think they're fun. I put ostrich because in second year in movement class, we were exploring animal work and I feel super passionately about the bird ostrich because that was the animal I chose and the final assignment consisted of me running around the room as an ostrich for like 20 minutes and it was invigorating and so I have a special place in my heart for ostriches. He became an yeah. ostrich. You perfected it. <laughs> that wraps up our rapid fire questions. Thanks y'all for playing. We do have some long answer questions lined up because we are so eager to hear from this amazing cast. First one I have is, what has this process been like working together as an ensemble as well as also as a chorus? 
Our process um, began with a lot of discussions, which I feel really helped to connect us and prepare us as an ensemble for the work ahead. And everyone has been so committed to telling these stories both authentically and honestly. And I think that in order to put on this show, we have to put a lot of trust into each other. And I feel supported by each and every single member of this cast. And then being a part of the chorus has been this like really special experience. I don't know what other word to use besides special because you can feel the camaraderie like radiating throughout the room. We had to do this um, thing where we had to move as it and function as a unit and our director calls it satelliting. And now it almost feels like second nature and natural. And often when we're performing like these bigger chorus scenes, I feel like I'm a part of something bigger than myself, which is really special and just makes me feel all tingly and happy. Yeah, that was so wonderfully said, Alicia. And just to add to that, something we've been focusing on a lot is the importance of listening to one another as a collective group. Um, these characters, these women have gone through this kind of collective experience together, these traumas. So it, we were really focusing on listening to each other, both emotionally and physically. And so that appears in our movement work and discovering how we breathe together as a unit and as Alicia was saying, how we move together as well. And then exploring the ways in which we can create a space where these women feel supported and safe to tell their stories. So in a sense, we're listening and giving that space and then also feeling supported and taking up space and telling our stories, which is such an important and powerful um, part of the, the script and the play. Absolutely. So well said and so, so important. Thank you both so much. My second question is, what has it been like working with your director, Anita La Selva? She's really great. She's very emotionally intelligent. And so she's she, she really has the ability to get you to understand exactly what the character is going through, but she does it in a way which is also very safe. She's not asking you to like explore trauma or anything. She did this exercise where we all kind of went into our bird. We like all picked a bird that we're gonna be. And then we experienced like these, this, these wars and these traumas from a bird's eye view. So it, there was no like emotional spill. It was really a great experience and she she does a lot of table work at the beginning so we sit down we go through the whole script we go through like objectives intentions uh shifts events everything and it seems kind of tedious at the time but then when you're on your feet you realize how much that work actually pays off and what Anita always says is she you know these aren't her exact words but she'll say like first choice good choice second choice better choice so when you're trying to like understand your character's intention objective sometimes it isn't always what it might seem initially so you have to really dig deep and, and find out who exactly your character is what they're doing what they're fighting for and yeah i'd really recommend working with her give her a chance to yeah off of that kenneth um her like I, I the words that's coming to mind is vigilance with the script it's almost like nothing gets by her it's really actually quite fascinating to see um us read a scene and have our initial thoughts about it and you know she's agreeing and seeing this but she also just knows that there's more before we even do so that's really interesting and then uh similarly her uh approach to working in trauma-informed acting is really really fantastic especially considering you know the world has gone through a pretty traumatic year so for her to be able to guide us through this process of, of working in a safe trauma-informed manner has just been so great for you know my training as an actor and I think a lot of other people in the cast would agree that it's just been like considering it's some tough uh, subject material her her way of um doing like a two-step self-removal process is just it's it's fantastic that's amazing I'm so glad to hear that thank you both so much the next question I have is what has been the most surprising thing that you've discovered over the course of this process well, going into like the, the rehearsal process, I knew that there was like, there were like a bunch of safety nets I could fall into. Um, but at the same time, what surprised me the most is like, that I didn't necessarily like need to fall there. Like, and even if I did, like people would be there to catch me. And it's not just like, it's not just like what happened in the rehearsal room, but like also like externally as well, like, like in the breaks and like, like in my personal life, like people will like, occasionally check in to see like how I was doing. And that was quite surprising because it was it was unplanned in a really good way. And those like external like acts of care and kindness created this like 
net of support that I didn't like pre-plan essentially. No, yeah, I would agree 100%. Something else that I think really surprised me was we all know that we've been going through this pandemic and especially with this show, we've been following a lot of restrictions and precautions to make sure we are as safe as possible. And that means we weren't able to necessarily touch. And so the power that we were able to find without human connection and to convey such strong, important messages without physical human touch was quite mind blowing. Yeah, those are both just so amazing to hear. Thank you both so much. And our last question, wrapping up this interview today, what has your character taught you over the course of the rehearsal process? Um, Something that I learned um, pretty early on in the process from my role in the show is like what Kenneth said, like sometimes your impulses for how you feel in a certain moment will serve your character and at other times it won't. And for me specifically um, to embody the bleeding one authentically, I had to use aspects of myself that I wasn't necessarily as familiar with. <laughs> the bleeding one and I definitely go about a lot of things in very different ways. She finds a lot of her strength in confident and her confidence in rage and revenge and and like those things fueling her. And I don't consider myself a very rageful person. So learning to embody those traits and her impulses within myself has been challenging, but also very fulfilling. And not to mention then having to completely drop those someone else entirely because throughout the course of the play the bleeding one transforms um into other characters that are the complete opposite of her like <laughs> at one point actually at multiple points I'm an infant <laughs> and I'm also a servant who is like bubbly and humorous and so uh, all I have to say is I've definitely learned to stretch myself as an actor and to do so very quickly yeah um definitely definitely feel that now it's uh it's wild because yeah Procne has has quite the journey throughout the play going from a child to uh, an adult to a mother and so I don't know she's taught me a lot of a lot of things in regards to loyalty and devotion and determination you know like how far you'd go for those that you're bound to and those that you love but also also at the beginning of the play she's this kid and it's been really interesting to look back at the energy required to do that you know they had um Anita had Elif and I running around the rehearsal hall to kind of tap into that energy and like yelling and screaming and just it was you know it's 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 super athletic and uh yeah she's she's taught me a lot in in this wild journey Amazing. Thank you both for sharing. That was that was incredible to hear about. And that, as I said, wraps up this cast interview. Thank you all so, so much for being here. We cannot wait to see the show very, very soon. Make sure to catch If We Were Birds, directed by Anita La Selva from October 28th to November 7th, live streamed from Theatre Arendelle.